Last but not least. Okay, can you hear me okay? I can.
Really well done, Alicia. Um, you've got this huge sound. Um, so that's great. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and hit up uh, a little bit of both sections. Um, which would you like to do first, the slow section or the fast? Um, it doesn't matter. Just anything with like the high notes, because I'm trying to learn how to drop my jaw and I'm having difficulty with that. I don't really know how to do it. Okay, so yeah, um, one great exercise to sort of discover this is, um, this is not my, uh, I did not come up with this, um, but it's really great, um, is what I call undertones. So often we practice our overtones, our harmonics, um, but we also have some undertones, as you know, when we um, finger a high note, of course, if our air is not, you know, working properly, we get an undertone. So if I'm just going to take a high G, I'm fingering a high G, and but I'm going to use a super slow airstream at first. And I get this kind of bamboo flute tone. But I'm going to gradually increase um, the energy of the air, and as well as start to shift my embouchure, okay, into position. And you can think about trying to keep the jaw loose. Maybe instead of, you know, thinking about opening the mouth, think about just the feeling of um, letting it hang more. You want to try that on a G? Yes, ma'am. Oh, and then like it just it stays down. So it's yeah. like the chin is down like that. Um, well, yeah, you're going to, I mean, essentially open the mouth. And so one thing you can do is just find that, um, find that boundary, how open, how much can you drop the jaw before the note bottoms out? And, um, on, and it, you might be surprised by how much you can open it. Um, you want to try it on a high A? Yes, ma'am. Boy, that sounds really nice. And then it's like, it stays in that position like that. Like, um, oh my gosh, I never thought about it. <laughs> um, I mean, well, I can tell you, um, I remember Bonnie Boyd saying, um, it's like when you say the word, duh, <laughs> duh, the, like you're just letting the chin hang a little bit more but then of course you've got your lip muscles that will help you form your embouchure mm -hmm. right as well as of course the air support and i like to stay away from the word support because <laughs> it makes people do funny things but whatever um and that's that is part of it um is also the air um being present but perhaps not too uh, forceful. Awesome. Okay. Um, another exercise I like to do are these octaves. Um, so you can try and keep the same uh, chin placement um, for the upper note that you have for the bottom note. Um, and this idea that I was talking about with, um, I think it was. Uh, either Donald or Logan, I can't remember already. <laughs> I forgot this idea about letting the air go through the roof of the mouth. Because when you sing, there's a lift in your soft palate, right? When you sing a high note. So we can do that also on our high notes to help sort of streamline the air from our bodies into the flute. Why don't you try an octave that was on G, you know, Like that one? Uh-huh. Okay. How does that feel compared with normal? I do hear the openness. Yeah, yeah. Um, another way I describe it is um, 
you know, uh, shifting the air to the front of the face. Singers often talk about like their mask, <laughs> which I don't totally understand, but um, we can sort of feel, we can place this air or, you know, like in your sinuses, for instance, or you aim the air for the bridge of your nose. And I think this can help give that upper register some lift, you know. So I feel it vibrate in the front of my face versus kind of keeping an all vowel, which is great for low register. So like UL, fabulous for low register, pretty crappy for high register. It's going to keep you flat and, and, and uncomfortable. So let's try that idea where you feel you aim the air for like the bridge of your nose or you feel like your sinuses are opening up. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it on an A flat. Okay. And A natural. B flat. Let's keep going. One more. So observations from you. Um, it just sometimes it feels like like right here on the side of my neck, like I'm working hard. Oh, okay. Is that like the left side? It. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not. Um, I don't. I don't. I try not to. Sometimes think about. How do I how do I want to say this? Um, I let the I let the sound guide me a lot. Um, I do I do shift my awareness to certain parts of my body just to check in. Am I holding tension like in my lower left back? That's a popular one with me. Or am I um, you know hips? But yeah, definitely shoulders. Um, what I notice for me is on my right side. There's like a spot like right here where I can tell it, um, when I'm playing, like that is sort of being engaged and it doesn't need to be, so I let go of it and then things sound better. Um, so maybe just, so I'm wondering um, if listening to the sound and the sound that you want and like, and then of course, letting your teacher help you to tell you, you know, you're going down the right path or whether it's the wrong path, um, maybe that, um, until this starts giving you pain, right, um, or tension, I'm not sure I would worry about it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I mean, do you feel pain or tension in there? That I don't, I don't is feel pain. It's just, I can tell, like, I'm trying to do something with my job. Like, I'm literally trying to do something. Oh, okay. For the high notes. Yes, for the high notes. Okay, I would suggest that undertone exercise then, because um, that's about how little can I do and get my high notes out. Gotcha. Um, the other thing you might try is looking into where you're feeling your air come from. Um, thank you, Logan. Um, so I'll ask you now, where do you think your air comes from? Definitely here. The belly? Yes. Okay. I'm going to, um, let's try a few things. Um, let's see if we can get, is there maybe a spot from the piece, whether it's like a, a lyrical part or a technical for the, for the dropping jaw part? Yeah. Okay. On um, that part where it's like, okay. Um, is that, that's from the, the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So let's try, um, so your lungs are not just in front, right? They're three dimensional, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> and so there's lungs in the back, right? And you can feel where your rib cage ends at the bottom in the back, right? So your lungs go all the way down there. And so I want you to think about the source of the air coming from that bottom part of the lungs in the back. Okay. 
So try that little run again and you can take it at any speed. And I want you to feel like that is where your support is coming from, not necessarily the belly. Let's try this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, so just make some mental notes about that. Um, now I want you to imagine the air, you can't see me, um, coming from your sternum, which is this, you know, your breastbone. And that's actually where the diaphragm connects to your rib cage. I don't know if you knew that. That was like a revelation for me. So when somebody, I tell my students, like, you know, if your band director tells you to blow from the diaphragm, translate it to the sternum that's really and and it also connects all along the bottom of the rib cage so can you try that run again imagine that you're blowing from the sternum okay so make some mental notes about that and the last one I want you to try is to imagine that your support is coming from the sides. Um, you know, your rib cage got, has little, you know, muscles in between each bone. And that, the rib cage is what is helping to control the exhale. So you take a breath in. And um, you feel, when you hold your breath, you feel your, your rib cage muscles holding still. You feel that tension. So try it again, thinking about the support coming from the sides of the rib cage this time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So was there one that stood out to you as being like, wow, like that one really works. That one feels nice and easy. I like the sides. The sides. Okay. Um, now, the second thing, um, do you feel like maybe you're just working or blowing too hard for your high notes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want you to think about maybe this other source of your air. Now, the abdominal muscles, you know, we engage them a little bit for um playing but i wouldn't say we engage them as much as say like an oboist or a trumpet um for whatever reason we just I, in my experience we just don't need that much force in the airstream and everything else about your air is working so beautifully i think it's probably just an old habit right um you see that little run um I used to get throat noise, and I'm working on stopping that too. So something's going on with tension. I don't know. Yeah. So um, dropping the jaw will help that. It's pretty impossible to have throat noise when the jaw is loose, like that. Um, and then also, it's probably a support thing. Um, your uh, so let's see if this um, helps that. Um, so. I bet it's happening on that C to D flat before the high A flat. Sorry, I don't have. <laughs> what if you just went to that D flat and held it and really tried to, you know, use this other area of support? Yeah, that D flat sounds like that can be a little bit higher in the head to me. That idea about the air going through the roof of the mouth. Try it again. I mean, even through Zoom, that's a huge difference. Yeah, I hear it. It's, it's like, I, 
it's like I try to like I can tell it how like if I want to really make that throat noise I can and it, like, it's weird I don't know how to explain it <laughs> well it's 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 been there for a while probably right yeah yeah um I, I so I have had some you know throat noise it's not a huge problem for me but I do notice it every once in a while um and i like to when that happens i like to use i like to practice with two earplugs in because then i can really hear it <laughs> yeah so there are um a lot of ways um to think about this another idea is to just imagine your airstream your air column like this clear um test tube it's this clear cylinder and nothing is impeding the air it's the air is not getting stuck along the way it's moving like a piston through your 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 windpipe um that can also help um prevent some throat noise okay um that's probably all the time we have for but that's a big topic yeah so we can uh, approach it from a lot of different ways. Um, but if you have any questions, um, uh, Donald, I, I'll just put my email in the chat here. I'm not talking about just do it myself. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can they can contact me there. And um, I'm happy to talk all day about this. So thank you for playing, Alicia and Logan and Donald. Thank you so much for teaching me. Oh, you're welcome.